Hi everybody, it's Eric Murray from TheSugarHuddle.com. Well, Monday night's uh, Giants-Falcons game, word I used over and over again in the article I posted on TheSugarHuddle.com, which again, please visit, was befuddled, or befuddlement, or you know whatever variation of that word you want to use. And basically, to make a long story short, if you watched that Giants-Falcons telecast on ESPN, you know exactly what I'm talking about because, of course, Pat Shermer, the one-time Cleveland Browns head coach, who was terrible on a terrible Cleveland Browns team and is terrible on a terrible Giants team, first year, obviously, as a Giants head coach, he, he just did so many head-scratching things down the stretch. And there's a good chance that the Giants were still going to lose, even if he would have made the right calls. But nonetheless, regardless of that fact, it's still makes you wonder, you know, how long is this guy going to last as a head coach? Because he just did some <laughs> terrible things, you know, things that even, you know, the greenest of football coaches, you know, youth football coaches know better than, you know, watching the game at home. I mean, people with very little football knowledge know not to do. So anyway, anyways, let's set the stage. So it's 20 to 6 Falcons. It's a little under eight minutes to go, 740 to be exact. Giants get the ball back, drive it right down the field. They score in exactly three minutes, which puts it a little under five minutes. So it's 20 to 12. And, you know, football 101, football for dummies, if you will, the kind of unwritten rule or the strong suggestion for any NFL coach, especially head coaches is that you kick the extra point, make a 20-13, to 7-point game. Then you play some defense, get the ball right back, drive down the field, and you score a touchdown. And then from there, that late in the game, you, know, you can roll the dice, go for two, and avoid overtime. Okay, that's fine. And if you get the two, then you win 21-20. If you don't get it, you're down 20-19, assuming there's at least you know, a few seconds or so on the clock. You can maybe recover an onside kick, try to throw up a Hail Mary, you know, see what happens. And then best case scenario, you take 21-20 lead, and then, you know, you, you look great. Or you can even kick the extra point and force it to overtime, if you will. Shermer, for God knows what reason, decides that it. he gets this bright idea that instead of naturally kicking the extra point, remember, down eight points, instead of making a seven-point game, go for two now, to make it 20 to 14 if you get it. And then on the back end, if you get the ball back and then you drive down the field, score a touchdown, kick the extra point, and now you're up by one. More often than not, it really doesn't work like that in the NFL. And uh, needless to say, on the two-point conversion play, which was a pretty decent call, Odell Beckham Jr., who usually has amazing hands, tried to come back for the ball and it went right through his hands. So it's 20 to 12. And, of course, just inside of five minutes, 447 left. Giants kick it away, naturally. They still had timeouts on the board. I think they still had all three at that point. And, of course, they aren't able to play very much defense. They couldn't make any third down stops. Uh, the Falcons were 7 for 13 on third downs on the night, even though it wasn't a real amazing offense night for them. They were 7 for 13 on third downs. That was kind of the difference for them offensively. But, anyways, so... The Giants use all their timeouts. They don't make any stops. And the Falcons run it, you know, end up running it down a two-minute warning. A couple of setbacks on some false starts. Fourth and three at the New York 38. And Dan Quinn, obviously the Falcons head coach, you know, he's a he's a student of Pete Carroll. Of course, he was a defensive coordinator under Carroll with the Seahawks when they won the Super Bowl. Obviously, he himself nearly led the Falcons to a Super Bowl title two years ago. We all know about you know, how that game turned out against the Patriots, but anyways, he's he's a guy's risk taker, and, and he likes to take gambles, and you know, he decided to try a fifty-six yard field goal, which you know, retractable roof stadium, the roof was open, but the weather was ideal. But the thing that's interesting is, and you, know, you have a veteran kicker and Matt Bryant, who you know, you've tried so many of those kicks before, and it typically works for you. But remember, Bryant uh, got hurt last week, banged up his knee. And uh, anyway, so they had to sign a kicker off the street, Giorgio Tavecchio, a, a veteran, you know, used to kick for the Raiders, bounced around a couple of teams. 
So they just signed him off the street during the week. Remember, he's a left-footed kicker, whereas Bryant's a right. So left-footed kicker, and that means Matt Bosher, the holder, also the team's punter, had to switch his routine around, you know, go around the other side to take the snaps. And, you know, Tavecchio nailed a 40-yarder earlier, nailed a 50-yarder to begin the fourth quarter, which is a huge kick, drills this one from 56, which totally validates Quinn, and really wasn't a bad idea anyways because, um, you know, if you make the kick, it's two-possession game, and that pretty much puts it away. And if you miss the kick, well, the Giants do get it near midfield, but, you know, Giants have scored 12 points all night. They're not exactly a very good offensive team. You know, the Falcons had all these sacks and all this pressure on them, so they felt pretty good uh, the way they were playing defense, something they haven't really done much of this year uh, as Atlanta's defense. So, drills a kick, 23-12. One, I think there's 155 left to go. Giants get it back. Very first play after the kickoff, Eli Manning, Sterling Shepard connect, 58-yard completion. All of a sudden, they're down to the... Uh, uh, Falcons 14 yard line with you know 140 something left or where the heck there was on the clock and they quickly you know are able to get up the line and throw a pass and complete then they complete a, another pass in the field of play and I think it was a I want to say it was like a six yard completion to Shepard down to the eight yard line I believe it was a Shepard but a six yard completion down to the eight so it's in the field of play not a real great play call not a real great strategy there but nonetheless they still have plenty of time to quickly get up the line get their act together within 10 or 12 seconds run the next play you know still well over a minute to go I think just inside a minute and a half something like that whatever reason they decide to screw around take their good old time and then you know 20 seconds tick by they run and play you know then they run the next play another 20 seconds ticks by Get it down to the one yard line on completion. I believe it was to Red Ellison, a seven yard completion to the one. Then they decide to get up the line and run a quarterback sneak with Eli Manning. Now, Eli Manning's a guy that until week one, uh, the start of the year against Dallas, he hadn't a attempted a quarterback sneak in like a ridiculously long time, like seven to nine years, almost 10 years, like real crazy time period. And he con successfully converted the two against Dallas in week one. But yeah, he, he decides to use quarterback sneak from the one, which isn't a bad idea. I mean, the guy's 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 doesn't get it. So, doesn't get it. And then they screw around for 20-some-odd seconds. And then they try to run another quarterback sneak. Don't get it. You know, there's like 20 seconds left in the game at this point. Then they get up, run another snap. Odell Beckham Jr. has a nice toe tap and uh, gets a touchdown. And makes it, uh, you know, 23-18 game or whatever. And they get two-point version, 23 away. Five seconds left in the game. So if you get the onside kick, all you can do is throw up a Hail Mary. J just ridiculous stuff like that. So the Giants knew what they were getting themselves into. Uh, you know, Matt Ryan had a pretty decent night. But again, the seventh for 13 was a decider. I was really impressed with the Falcons' defense. But you, know, you look at the Giants and you just say, I mean, where's this team going? You know, how long is it before they realize that maybe they hired – Another bad head coach, uh, and even though, even though Eli Manning had a pretty decent game, generally speaking, you know, when do you finally bench Eli, go in another direction, you're 1-6 now, and as for Atlanta, you're 3-4 and four now, you know, two-game winning streak, all of a sudden you're back in this playoff thing, I mean, every non-division leader in the NFC right now is what I like to call a bipolar team, uh, which just means like you don't know what you get out of them any given week, so all of a sudden Atlanta's back in this thing. So anyways, as far as Atlanta, they've got a bye now. Then they play the Redskins a week after that. I'm really intrigued by this team because if they start playing defense, remember, a lot of injuries on the defensive side of the ball. They had a top 10 defense last year. This team starts playing defense. They could be uh, one of the biggest dark horse threats in the NFL postseason if they find a way to make it. So look out for Atlanta. And as for New York, they need to start benching guys and just – play whoever to kind of audition for 2019 because that's basically where they're at. So anyways, that's my Monday night recap. Please go to sugarl.com and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.